Hello. Welcome to Eureka. Eureka, the National Children's Museum, opened in 1992, the first of its kind in the UK. At Eureka, children are inspired to learn about themselves and the world around them through hands-on playing, imagining, experimenting, and above all, having fun. More than 20 years on, Eureka remains unique in the UK, and learning through play is still at the heart of everything we do. Eureka's multi-sensory approach means that it's always been an accessible destination for disabled children and their families. In 2010, we decided to reach out to this growing audience to become even more inclusive. Generous funding from the Esme Fairburn Foundation enabled us to deliver a three-year project which would see us embrace organisational change through extensive training, develop our visitor offer through meaningful engagement with the disabled audience, and forge relationships with a range of partners that would help us on our journey. The Helping Hands adventure began in August 2011. Throughout our journey, we consulted with families of disabled children as well as disability professionals to ensure that Helping Hands reflected Eureka's commitment to instinctive inclusion. I think Eureka's in a great position to be able to show other families that it's a place for everyone to be included. And we're not going to make a big fuss, but we are going to meet the needs of families with disabled children as much as we meet the needs of everybody that comes to Eureka and hopefully that's going to send other families home with a positive message. In terms of gallery development and how we, we look at projects, I think inclusivity and access needs to be part of what we do, not, not a certain aspect of it. Uh, so for the latest project we did, um, we talked to children with disabilities, we talked to the parents of children with disabilities, so we were able to respond to their needs and their aspirations all the way through the project, have that dialogue with them, and again, when you see the final results, yes, it has been uh, developed to be better suited to those children, um, but actually that just means it's better suited for all children. Organisational change was key to the success of Helping Hands. Calderdale Parents and Carers were just one of the partners we worked with to help us deliver training, which gave the entire Eureka team a clearer understanding of disability and the skills to engage confidently with our disabled visitors. Specifically for um, our staff that are going to be doing the Helping Hands um, program. I think it's really helpful that they do as much training as possible because they're going to be dealing with them um, sort of families and children one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but I think for everyone to just have a general awareness of different disabilities, I think it's really important um, you know, for Eureka as an organisation for different families and children that are coming into Eureka so that we can just know as much as possible and, and pr provide the best possible visitor experience for those families. We used a range of formats for specialist training, including online, face-to-face -face and peer training. Our partners included the Down Syndrome Training and Support Group, the Virtual College, Calderdale Disabled Children's Team and Calderdale Hearing and Visually Impaired Services. I think the sign-in training is going to make a massive um, difference to the visitor experience. Not only our staff will be able to um, effectively communicate with people with um, a hearing impairment but also just to spread the knowledge in general to all our visitors that our staff are well trained and that we're being even more inclusive with what we offer. The training I've had which is online autism training but also general disability awareness training really gave me the confidence and just some general background knowledge of what family life might be like and that awareness just makes it easier for me to make it easy for them. Audience research told us that families with disabled children find that days out can be very stressful. Our extra pair of hands enablers help families plan their visit as well as meet and support them on the day. Both families and enablers enjoy the opportunity to get to know each other. The family that I was an extra pair of hands for today were a lovely family. There was Mum Mary and then there were twins Gregor and Henry and Gregor was the boy with special needs who was a wheelchair user and their older sister Millie. If you have an extra pair of hands as a family, it gives you the chance to relax. If you're on your own with all the children, you just, you're just constantly trying to stop them doing things and it becomes a bit of a chore and a bit of an effort rather than an enjoyable experience. Having someone there to help us as a family just gives you that flexibility and the chance to actually enjoy the visit rather than battle through it. Box Research conducted continuous evaluation which led to the development of additional features of the project, such as the Eureka Story, a pop-up sensory room and sensory story sessions. 
when you're just reading a story at home, she does tends to listen, whereas she was very interactive with the stories, and it's it's more enjoyable for, from my side. I'm from her side, and it's definitely given me some ideas for home as well. We're really impressed that uh, Eureka have, have wanted to be so involved with um, families and the word does get around um, where positive places to take your children are and where you know where to go and where you'll be helped and what sort of help is available um, and it's really important to our families to have that little bit of extra help. To date we've run over 80 club sessions, some with waiting lists. Our Saturday clubs for children with Down syndrome are amongst our most popular. Yeah, when we go out, um, general days out, there isn't specialist trained people there. So it makes it difficult. Charlotte's attention span's not very good. Um, and the sense of danger is not very good as well. So people aren't trained in the places that we go. So it can be difficult. You know, you've always got to keep an eye on us, which I'm looking forward to today. Um, we've never been to any specialist Downs groups before. So it'll be interesting to see how she reacts to other people with Downs. I love the fact to get a bond with the child because with the Saturday clubs we have three sessions and most of the children come back to each session and you get this bond with them that then they get their annual pass and they come back over and over again and like some kids just come just to see you and like just to see them, the smile on the face it just makes your day and you just think that you're doing well. It's been really good, we've enjoyed it, the helpers have all been great um, they've all known the Makaton sign language which has been brilliant um, and they've let us to our own devices as well as much as anything. There's not just been a set routine of you've got to do this, you've got to do that. They've just let us get on with it. It's been great. Although the very generous funding from Esme Fairbairn comes to an end at the end of August, inclusion doesn't stop there for Eureka. The sensory room is still there, the enablers are well trained and the extra pair of hand service will continue. I think the real legacy of Helping Hands is in the building into Eureka's ethos of inclusion and accessibility and the enablers' enthusiasm and commitment to that ethos will continue. In today's world, inclusivity and accessibility are essentials for visitor attractions. It's something that is a visitor expectation. It's also something that is a right that is um, identified in the UN Convention of Children's Rights. But more importantly, it's something that we really want to do that's important to us because we want to provide opportunities for all children and families to play and learn. With the help of funding from Esme Fairbairn, we've been able to develop a best practice model in accessibility and inclusivity and our intention is to embed that in the organisation to continue to build on that and also to share our best practice with other organisations. Under the name of Access All Areas, Phase 2 will continue to see inclusivity as a core part of everything we do. Not only are we working towards accrediting our in-house training, we're also adding our experience and expertise gained from Helping Hands into our Eureka Experts Consultancy and Training Package. If you'd like to find out more, email accessallareas at eureka.org.uk.